Hey designers, if you follow today's tutorial, you'll learn how to create this flat illustration in just a few steps using Adobe Illustrator. My name is Cosmin and I'll walk you through the entire design process from start to finish. I'll start with the sketch. Now, the concept is to have a person that's riding a cloud. So that was the initial abstract idea and I started sketching something out. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the sketch and the vector final illustrations for free. The link is in the description of this video. Let's jump into Illustrator now and start using that sketch to create the actual illustration. Hit create new and we're going to start with a new document. Name it cloud person, <laughs> which makes no sense. The width is 2000, the height is the same. I'll use the default settings and hit create. But I'm going to go to view and disable snap to pixel just because you know how we do it if you watch any of my tutorials you know that i don't like that setting let's close the transparency tab and i'll drag from a different monitor i have the sketch and i'll drag it over here place it somewhere in the middle of the canvas go to the transparency tab it's over here on the right hand side uh, leave it to normal and just lower it to somewhere around 20 percent and from the layers panel i'm going to open these up lock the layer up so i won't accidentally hit it so even if i click on it i'm not going to be able to move it let's uh, switch to the pen tool because we're going to start tracing this illustration i'm going to select an empty fill and leave the stroke color to black the stroke size is going to be about two points maybe i'm going to see how that looks then maybe move to something bigger or smaller depending on how how good that looks i'm going to start tracing individual elements for example this hand try to be as loose as possible and not have too many straight lines this would work let's see if this is enough maybe maybe make it a little bit bigger make it three points okay and i'm going to continue using the pen tool and start drawing on top of it one thing to look for you don't want paths going over like this you like for them to mimic like it's the same line right even though it will be made out of a lot of lines right here in this illustration let's continue where we are left off and create these series of waves i'm going to take a few chances and make it a bit more dynamic as you can see here this one kind of goes all the way around so the way i'm going to do it is create one straight line and then choose the selection by hitting down v so you are this selector right now and switch to the pen tool by hitting p with the shape selected add points i'm going to add one here one here and one in the middle and with the direct selection tool which is a i'm going to select this one and remove it that way you know that this line is going to continue itself and it's going to work just fine now let's continue where we left off click here and then create this arch now I'm going to have to complete this arch. So start from here and let's see if this would work. Now this is a bit too much. As you can see, like there is there is a dip over here. So I'm going to create just that. This is way better, even though I don't really like how it looks right here, but I'm going to see if I need to make any changes. So if you're following along, just place this sketch on a layer and start tracing it using an empty fill and this stroked outline as you can see the curve here is not it's not that great so i'm going to remove it and for that i'm going to take the curvature tool here from the left hand side start placing the first anchor hmm, let's see what what happened here i'm going to start from here click here click here then here oh we it it joins with a particular anchor there you have to click right beside it let's move it so there's a good joint here and the curves here are much smoother than what i would have been able to do just with the pen tool then switch to the pen tool and just continue tracing let's take the pen tool again and create the hat in the sketch i can see that this line goes like this but a good opportunity to just have it this one continue like this yeah i think this looks way better now because this illustration is kind of in a reflection i'm going to create only the top half part and maybe the left hand side and then i'm going to duplicate it because it should work once i duplicate it and i rotate it around it should uh, look good for this cloud i'm going to take the ellipse tool and start creating a round circle let's try and keep it the same as this one this looks good and now while holding down the alt key i'm going to make a duplicate and see where it matches right there these ones i want to merge so for that i'll go to the window pathfinder panel hit merge it doesn't work okay then i'll take the <laughs> i'll take the shape builder tool and just merge these two as you can see it overlaps over here so what i would like to do create anchor points where these uh, shapes should end create point over there 
and a point over here and then remove all of the other ones with the direct selection tool so switch to the direct selection tool click on it once and hit delete or backspace or whatever you'd like this is the final one oh, okay so it actually ended here okay i need to add an additional one and get rid of these ones also there's a small circle right here the last thing that i need to trace from this top half is the hand over here let's zoom in and start to try to continue this line and create a hand with this half selected select all of it right here go to the rotate tool click somewhere around and while holding down the alt key make a duplicate and then let's move it and place it on top of the initial sketch let's see if it looks good something like this should be good now let's create this shape same here and over here i'm going to connect these two these two parts with a simple shape this is roughly what it should look like once you stop tracing this illustration i'm going to include this in the description of this video as well you'll have all of the steps and before we move forward we would need to toggle the lock layer which is the sketch click on it and then maybe remove it or just make it not visible for this illustration to work you need now to choose uh, an accent color i'm going to use probably a yellow color just because i feel like that's a pretty nice shade to work with so for that i'll take the rectangle tool and i'll create a rectangle this which is the size of the canvas actually let's choose a color to start with i'm going to choose this orange select an empty stroke let's double click on the fill and i'm going to make adjustments maybe use some like this this yellow is kind of like a pale yellow maybe add more saturation to it even lighter than this something like this right click arrange it send it to the back and now i'm going to have to lock this layer up since it's right here at the bottom lock it up so you won't accidentally click on it now i'm going to create the highlights for this illustration and i'm going to create the actual shadows i'm only going to use white and black for this just to have a lot of contrast let's start with the highlights i'm going to take the ellipse tool switch it up to white and what i want to do is actually create these shapes behind all of these uh, lines so with the line selected uh, group them by hitting command or Control g now you have them grouped over here and i'm going to lock that layer up and from here I'm going to start adding uh, those shapes that, that I just told you about. So let's select a white fill, an empty stroke, zoom in, and I'm going to create the first circle right now. Move the ellipse behind the group, and I'm going to create some like this. And also, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I like to uh, offset some of the paths, so I don't really like going inside and matching all of the guides, which are the lines at the top. I'm going to offset some of the shapes over just to get some more interesting effects. With the Alt key selected, I'm going to make a duplicate and same thing here at the bottom and create one at the top as well. The only thing I'm going to highlight as well is the face and maybe this part as well. So for that, I'll take the same pen tool and just go over, over these shapes as close as possible. Okay, let's click here, go over to the bottom. Let's move it behind. I'm using command left bracket to send it behind. Same thing over here. It's kind of harder to, <laughs> to trace these illustrations when they're upside down, but I'm guessing that's the fun part of it. Send it to the back. And now I need maybe, maybe even add some shapes over here. See, so I don't really like to just create the shapes that are following and then offset them by a few pixels. Just feel free to place them wherever you want because in the end it doesn't really matter. You know, all it matters is if the composition is uh, right and looks good to you. Now I'm going to add some shadows to, to this portion just to add some contrast. And for those shadows, I'm going to actually use the black color I'm using for the lines as well. I'm going to start taking the pen tool, set a black fill and i need to figure out how i'm going to have those paths look so i'm going to start with maybe these these clouds and i'm going to create some wavy wavy shapes again try to follow it as much as possible if you like to do it if not that's fine as well let's try and have some like this don't really like the curvature here and for the right hand side i'm going to try to do something very similar then move a bit like so yeah this one doesn't look that good so with the direct selection tool you can start making adjustments until you find something that looks decent enough for example this one is a bit too much right over here but if you don't like the way it looks one thing you could do is just take the smooth tool 
and start going on top of it. So with it selected, I'll go over here and take the smooth tool. If you can't see this, keep in mind that I'm using uh, an essential classic workspace. Just move to that and you should be able to see it. Make this smaller and go with the smooth tool. As you can see here, for example, that, that curve looked pretty bad. After a couple of times of going over on top of it, you're going to see changes that I feel like are looking way better than they used to. Switch back to the pen tool and let's move to this portion over here. Even go a bit weird with it just because uh, it's going to end up looking way better in my opinion. Again, this is the style that I like doing. If you'd like to, if you'd like to actually color inside these shapes, go for it. There's no real rule to it. As you can see right, right here, it doesn't look really good. So I'm going to take this anchor point and drag it over so I have a pretty clean curve. I'm going to do the same thing on this side as well. As you can see, it sampled the Y color. So we'll need to take eyedropper tool, that's I on the, on the keyboard and sample the black color. If you have any kind of uh, small overlap like this, I would recommend just trying to cover it up just because it doesn't look good in terms of uh, visual tension. Try to stay away from it. As you can see, for example, here, there are a lot of things going on. So you have this line, you have the accent color, then the white color, and then the black one in a very small uh, space. So if you like to remove that, just just drag the anchors and make sure to cover it up. Here I can see some visual tension as well just because you have the white element overlapping. Didn't look right but now it does. The last one is probably this one. I'm going to try to forget how, how I did it on the top hand side and try to do something different with this one. Take these shapes so it comes something like this. Let's sample the black color for this one and for the last part I'm going to start from here. The thing is that when you're going to use when you're going to use fields like this you won't be able to see what's going on over here so that's that should actually help you create something more more unique in terms of how you're going to trace this illustration. Let's close this off and send it behind even though it doesn't really matter because you can't really see stroke outline. This is the final look of the illustration. If you followed all of the steps that are in this tutorial, you should have something very similar to this. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more. If you are creating these illustrations, tag me or send it over to my Instagram because I love seeing what you guys are coming up with following these tutorials. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Bye.